And hey guys, welcome back to the channel, back with the Wandering Mariners. So I got a great question today. It says, could you comment on Mariners keeping in contact with the outside world in another way, such as talking with family, paying your bills, etc. Starlink costs about $600 and a $30 a month fee. Definitely a simple fix. Unsure if a ship's captain would be okay with it or are you having one or not? Due to operational security and this is a good question you know when i first started sailing <laughs> the only outside information we ever had was mail my first deployment it was snail mail you would send a letter and take 30 days to find out for them to get your letter another 30 days to get the response and then I remember my second deployment and we actually had a phone system that you could call home. And I was so excited about the opportunity to call home. And then the internet and everything else just came rambling in. And it is now part of our daily lives that we expect to have communication with the world all the time. But if you come to work for Military Sea Lift Command, Military Sea Lift Command is kind of like... You're not in the Navy, but you are kind of like the water boy on the football team. You are a part of the team <laughs> and you're a necessity. You're bringing them everything they need, but you know, you're in their vicinity and giving away the operational information of where the battle group's moving and whatnot. If you're with Military Sea Lift Command, that could be a problem, which you mentioned OPSEC. So getting into it a little bit, Defense Scoops just put out this article this last April, and they were talking about two defense officials that were talking about shipboard Navy utilizing Starlink as a backup. Uh, so we usually have like a Marsat, uh, maritime satellite phones and such that we would use as backups. Well, now they're looking at Starlink as a backup to that because Starlink is very, it's its good when it's stationary, but having a good system that works well when you're moving, that can be kind of an issue. And also Starlink is not the end all be all because this last month, a command senior chief was just convicted for unauthorized Wi-Fi on her ship because she had set up a Starlink terminal and there was other sailors using that Wi-Fi terminal. And the thing is, when you're in the military or you're around the military or even with the military sea lift command, your operational movements matter. And if you notice that you might have a favorite YouTuber or TikToker that works for military sea lift command, they will have these blackout zones almost when they won't be posting because your pictures, your videos, everything has geotags on it nowadays. And people can figure out exactly where you were when you made those videos or you shot those pictures or you made those posts. So the military is very big on ensuring that when you are on board the ship, that you're using the authorized communications that go on and off the ship. Because in times of crisis, they might need to control that communication and turn the communication systems off. And if somebody has a, a satellite communication system that they could break out, that might breach that operational security. So I would definitely not get a Starlink system and bring it on board a ship. I think that would be a no bueno with military sea lift command. Now, a lot of commercial ships are going to Starlink, but they don't have... They're not on the team with the Navy. They're not going around the world supporting the Department of Defense. So it's a different situation if you're sailing SIU, unless maybe you're on a, a preposition ship or whatnot. But I would definitely just, if you're joining, get a really good phone plan. T-Mobile has a great international phone plan. And usually when you get into port, you could communicate that way. And Military Sea Lift Command does have communication from its ships. So there is a way for you to communicate off the ship. It's not going to be fast enough, or at least I haven't seen it fast enough, that you can actually be doing video chats or whatnot. A lot of times it was Messenger 
or sending emails back and forth to kind of communicate with family. Um, but typically, just for myself, historically, I'd always just told my wife, look, it's going to be three or four weeks till we're in touch again. I'll call you when we get into port somewhere. And she'd be like, okay. And that was kind of our understanding, you know, just we'll talk when we can talk and we won't when we can't. And she always understood. She could always email me if there was an issue. And I would probably send her an email every day or two just to say, hey, what's up? Not a lot of changes on the ship. I'd be more or less asking her what's going on. And you, you asked about paying your bills and you could do that from the ship's internet for the most part. Uh, sometimes there is certain systems that they will just block out or blacklist certain websites. So I've seen it where people are like, I can't even get into my bank account from here. So for myself, my wife either paid the bills or I would have set stuff set up on auto pay. And then I would just pay off my credit card every month when we got into port and whatnot. So I didn't have to worry about paying bills. Uh, there's a gentle balance when it comes to bill paying in Mariners because you want to be in charge, maybe paying the bills when you're there. But when you're not, you got to let your wife or spouse or girlfriend or whatever handle those things. And when you come back, when I was gone, a lot of times on deployments, I would just have the wife pay everything and take care of everything. And I wouldn't worry about it. So, but I thought this article was interesting because Viasat announced uh, just this February that they have installed the next generation wideband on the first of 105 ships that are going to get it for military sea lift command. So they are upgrading their wideband systems. And this one's supposed to be a lot better than what they've had over the last 10 year contract. But one thing I wanted to kind of talk about too, is like the future of internet, or I should say, uh, Starlink is now Star Shield, and they are talking about doing a military grade Starlink system and for national security. So that could be some next level stuff. I think that's great in theory. And hopefully, if the people that spend the money for the government could actually get that done, I believe it'd be awesome. Unfortunately, at least historically in the past, when I was in the Navy or sailing military sea lift command, you know, this technology, something comes out and you're, the Navy says, wow, we love this technology. Let's get it. So they have to go to appropriations and they have to say, we want to buy this. And, you know, they go to Congress and Congress says, okay, I'll tell you what, you could buy 200 of these. But before you buy 200, I'd like you to buy 10. Install these 10 on the ship. Use it for 18 to 24 months. And then if it's successful, then come back and then we'll approve the rest for your budget. And what ends up happening is technology is going so fast when it comes to internet and just technology overall that appropriations can't keep up with it because we want to make sure that, hey, this stuff's really going to work before we spend millions and billions of dollars on this stuff, right? So there's always this lag with the military and it always made me laugh in the past because friends of mine be like, oh, you're in the Navy. You probably have some really high tech stuff. And I'm like, eh, yeah, but I mean, in the private sector, technology is going a lot faster than the military sometimes. So I think the military is trying to change that, those levers and trying to get technology out there a lot faster, especially with all this new AI stuff. But it is just it's amazing where everything goes. But going back to your question, keep it in touch with family don't recommend any kind of other outside communications other than your cell phone. And, you know, when you're within land, you'll be able to call home or you go ashore, you can call home and video chat and all those good things. Uh, Google, Google Fi has a great Wi-Fi package for around the world when you're shoreside and you have internet connectivity. Um, but out at sea, you're going to be dependent on the ship's communications. And that's mainly for OPSEC. So you kind of already answered your own question. But hopefully this helps you out. If you guys got some value out of this video, make sure you like, subscribe, and we'll hit you on the next one. Peace.